Our first pattern of prayer is one that I call the Genesis prayer. And hopefully that becomes clear in the next few moments. In every one of these patterns, I'm going to read to you a portion of scripture, give you a little bit of background context for that scripture, and then I will uh, talk to you about what the prayer point is, give you a little few ways to pray it, and then allow you to pray it on your own, come back to a prayer point, explain it a little bit, help you pray it, and then allow you to pray it on your own. So we'll do this dance back and forth as we, as we go through each one of these patterns. Now, let me say this, though that when, when when we're doing this, you might want uh, to to get into a place that's easy for you to pray in. Maybe, uh, maybe even change your posture. Some like to sit, some like to stand, some like to kneel. I just encourage you to experiment with different postures in different places, different spaces, different moods, settings that help you uh, set an atmosphere for you to pray well. This first one again is the Genesis prayer. It's Psalms 51 verses 10 through 12. Uh, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain. This is uh, King David's prayer after he's fallen into a, 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 a deep season of life-altering sin. He has uh, brought his reputation, he's brought his family, he's brought his kingdom uh, <clears throat> through an enormous messy situation of sexual sin. And now he, he, he's, he's coming on the other side of this and he's asking the Lord uh, to, uh, to restore him. And this prayer he prays in Psalms 51 is a wonderful outline that I think really is designed uh, <clears throat> for new beginnings. So I love to pray this one at the beginning of the day, beginning of a week, beginning of a year. This is a great pattern of prayer. So the first one is this. Create in me a pure heart or a clean heart. I like what the message fair paraphrase says, give me a fresh start. The word create is the same word used in Genesis, in the beginning God created. In other words, it means to, to create something brand new, not recycled, but something out of nothing. Uh, it means that God to give me a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. It means um, I want a completely brand new beginning. So let's take a moment, maybe you wanna put your palms in front of you, and let's just begin to pray this. Little thought here, back to the Lord. In fact, why don't you just begin to say that now? Create in me a clean heart. It's been said that out of the heart flow the issues of life. So every issue is a heart issue. Right there, just tell the Lord that you want a heart that's soft, Come on, go ahead and use your words. And again, not just in your head and your heart, but with your mouth now, begin to just begin to tell the Lord. You can put your hand over your heart if you want to. Lord, I want a Genesis moment. I want a brand new beginning. Here at the beginning of my day, the beginning of my week, the beginning of my year. Let, let me have a heart that's whole. Now what I want you to do is I want you to begin to pray. And I want you just to surrender your heart, to give your heart to the Lord, fresh and anew. And for the next, you know, 30 seconds or so, why don't you now just begin to pray in regards to this, Lord, give me a clean, pure heart. Now the next one is this, it says, renew a right spirit within me. Again, the message paraphrase says, breathe holiness within me. This is where we examine uh, the, the attitudes of the heart because 
The Holy Spirit's not the only spirit that wants to be at work in our hearts. It says, renew a right spirit within me, meaning that there can, get, there can be some wrong spirits, there can be some jealousy, some anger, some bitterness, some pride, some greed. And so let's just take a few moments as we pray to just really examine the, the attitudes of our heart. And why don't you pray that right now? Would you just maybe even take a deep breath and you breathe out. Holy Spirit, breathe holiness into me. Remove anything in my heart that's not of you. In fact, why don't you just, as you pray right now, why don't you just begin to name the things? Maybe it is greed, maybe it is pride, bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, whatever's in your heart. And just take a moment and surrender all those to the Lord and ask him to breathe holiness into you. Next one is this, take not your Holy Spirit from me. And I think this one is, is really important because the gr greatest gift that he gave to the church is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he's our counselor, he's our comforter, he's the convictor, he's the healer, he's the, the one who gives us the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. But a beautiful way to pray this, take not your Holy Spirit from me. That's the greatest consequence of any of our sin, is a closeness, a, a person, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so right now, why don't we just begin to pray this? Ask the Holy Spirit right there. Make this a matter of prayer. Heads bowed, eyes closed, maybe even hands up. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, be in me. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Holy Spirit, baptize me with your power. Holy Spirit, lead me. So many different ways to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Why don't you just take a few moments now and, in, and ask for a fresh encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to be at work in you. Ask him to to fill you with the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Maybe you feel like you're um, in a place where you're spiritually dry and you just need maybe even to send the rain of the Holy Spirit as a metaphor over your life. Whatever that is, I just want you to ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'll give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Take about 30 seconds now and ask for the person of the Holy Spirit. Now what I want you to do is, this next one, I love this one, restore joy. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Oh, I, I like the message paraphrase on this one, bring me back from exile. And, and joy is usually the first fruit of the spirit that uh, the enemy cuts out. We, we, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We'll serve the Lord with joy or we'll serve our enemies. Uh, joy is a powerful thing. I, I like to say that joy is love's greatest emotion, it's joy. And so why don't we just take a moment now and ask the Lord to restore joy in our lives, joy in our relationships, joy in our jobs, joy in, 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 our, in our walk with the Lord, joy in the spiritual disciplines. Where have you lacked joy? Ask him for joy. And, and maybe even take a moment here in, in, in the time where you pray to rejoice. I think the quickest way maybe even to prime the pump or to get joy to begin flowing in our lives again is to practice some praise and to practice some worship. So why don't you take a moment in your own words and ask the Lord 
to restore to you joy. I love the close here where King David says, Grant me a willing spirit. Put a fresh wind in my sails. Uh, make me want to want to do your will again. How many of you know that sometimes your wanter can get broke? Uh, so w w the greatest prayer ever prayed is, is Jesus saying this, not my will, but your will be done. Would you just take a moment and just surrender your will to the Lord to tell him you want him to lead you, you want him to guide you, you want him to direct you, and to put in you a willing spirit that even if you don't want to do it, Lord, help me to be willing to do it and say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And if there's any places in your life where you're struggling with the will of God, just present those before them and ask the Lord, Lord, help me know your will in going, where do I go to school, who I want to marry, what I'm supposed to do with my life. Help me to know your will. Why don't you take 30 seconds or so, and maybe even a minute, and ask the Lord uh, to grant you a willing spirit. Now, as we get ready to close, let me just pray a quick prayer over us and in regards to all that we've prayed here today. Father, I just thank you for every person who's taken the time to pray through this Genesis prayer. And I ask that you would do those exact things, that you would give them a clean heart, renew a right spirit, pour a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their life, I pray that you would give them the fruit of joy. And Lord, I just pray that you'd grant them a willing spirit. I pray that this would be a transformative moment, a transformative experience for them. And Lord, I bless them as they go about their day, their week, their year. And I just pray, give them a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.